Hi traders, Steve here again from Option Alpha. Today's video, I want to jump in and demonstrate how I manually open trade ideas positions and add them to my automated trade idea bot, right? So we're looking at this bot and I've discussed in previous videos how I've set up my criteria and filters, leaning heavily on that research we've done in our most recent blog, which I've linked below if you haven't checked it out yet. Uh, and things have been going good. I've shared the progress of it all. I've narrowed it down to this one bot. Um, the only downside is you can see the bot hasn't really been opening very many positions, right? Now it did actually open one right before I jumped on here, ironically. So it did get into one this morning. Um, but other than that, it had been 17 days since the last position was opened. Um, now Kirk did a video kind of highlighting the whys of this, which I've linked below as well. But quick overview is we've seen a lot of traders in the community talking about this too, right? The market's on this huge run up. Uh, volatility has really come out of the market, which means the premiums are dropping in options prices, right? So we're not quite getting those same reward to risk profiles, the expectancy, the probabilities that we were seeing a couple of months ago. So the offshoot of that is that the trade ideas bot isn't really finding a lot of opportunities, which is fine, right? Uh, I don't mind that because I tell the bot exactly what I wanted to look for. And if it can't find it, then it doesn't open a trade and that's beautiful that's exactly what I wanted to do however the downside to that is I'm not getting into a lot of positions and we know with probabilities I want to try and get into as many positions as I can and if I'm going 14 17 days between getting into these high probability trades I want to kind of come in and start to add to that trade count so I'm going to show you exactly how I do that Let's jump over to trade ideas we can see inside of trade ideas that what I've done is I've gone ahead and filled out some presets and I call it my TI bot settings. I saved it as a preset and it has pretty much all the same filters that the bot does. Now what I did do is I actually excluded all of the symbols that are currently in the bot. So I've automatically removed that from the trade ideas database when it's looking for these trades. And I do that so that as I come in and start to manually add these positions, if the bot should open positions like it did this morning, I'm not you know, piling it all into the same ticker. So I'm taking this manual control to look at tickers in the universe outside of what the bot is looking at. Now everything else is pretty much the same as the bot. I have a couple of the criteria just a little bit lower so I can see a wider range and then start to focus in on exactly what I'm looking for. But you can see, right, over 20 days to expiration, which we found has been a big deal inside the research. I start my reward risk at about 50%. And then I can start to ratchet it up from there as I want to narrow down my opportunities. High probability over 60, max profit, right? A better than 50-50 chance of hitting a max profit. And then I just go ahead and focus on trades that have a positive expectancy. So I have a ton of trades in here. Now, one thing I'm actually going to add to this too is a neutral filter. I have no idea where the market's going, right? Full disclosure. I wish I did. I would share with you. But I have no idea. And I've shared in the past, I try not to impart any of my ideas and market bias into my trades. And with this huge market run up, I don't know what's going to happen. I wouldn't be shocked if it kept going up. I wouldn't be shocked if it reverted and pulled back a little bit after this giant run up. Um, so after a rally like this, I think I'm just going to focus on neutral. So I'm not trying to chase to the upside. I'm not trying to jump in front of this market with a bunch of momentum. Right. Actually releasing a blog here soon about the December effect and the so-called Santa Claus rally. Um, so I've seen different opinions on maybe the market's just getting started. Who knows? So I want to go ahead and just focus on neutral trades for this. And now we have quite a few trades. You can see kind of a wide range of tickers. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to exclude a couple of these because you can see like this Visa Iron Condor. 40 days from expiration, but it has earnings in 55 days. Oftentimes we'll see tickers approaching earnings while their volatility will rise. I don't really want to get into a short um, options position if volatility is going to rise as we get close to expiration. I'm actually just going to remove that one. I'm going to remove Meta for the same reason. BA, Johnson & Johnson, right? So now we've sort of narrowed down our focus. Right now we're ranking up here by reward to risk. I got some pretty decent trades. These ones have quite a bit more risk than what I'd be looking for in DIA. I think because I'm manually entering these and I'm still potentially going to get the bot opening trades, I'd like to keep my risk, for me personally, under $200. So I'm going to eye this XLE Iron Condor. I'm going to pop that open and we can see 
right now, right? We have alphas positive, EV a little over five, probabilities over 60%, max profit at 55%, the reward to risk uh, over 60%, which, uh, you know, I'm not afraid of that in this market. So I'm actually pretty happy with this trade. I was thinking I might come in and play around with it. Just so you all know, I do this a lot too. Just because this is the opportunity presented, it doesn't mean you can't come in here and modify and edit and play around with these strike prices a little bit, right? So if the reward to risk isn't quite what you want or it's too much risk or you want to see if you can get a little bit better probabilities, by all means, jump in and edit these strike prices and see if you can find a different trade. I was doing that earlier when I was looking for trades because I found some that had a lot of risk. But sometimes when you modify it, you actually turn those positive trades into negative trades. So just keep an eye on your probabilities and your expectancy if you're doing that. But there's nothing that says you can't come in and customize it a little bit. I'm actually happy with this one because it's got a nice low loss for me, but some great probabilities. I'm going to move my final price up towards just around the mid price. Actually, I'll drop it down to 75 just to be safe. Still getting 60%. EV and alpha are still positive. I'm gonna go ahead and do fast smart pricing. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that directly into that automated trade ideas bot that I have running. And then we'll go ahead and do the normal 40% exit that Jack highlighted in this video um, is a popular one. So go ahead and Place this trade and see what happens. Running through. There we go. And just like that, we've easily added this trade into our bot, right? We still have great probabilities. We have a positive expected trade. We're going to try and get that trade count up. We're not stomping on those ticker symbols that we already have in there. So I am thrilled with that. We can jump over to the bot. We'll see in the positions that it is already in there. And ready to go joining that short call spread in QQQ I already had which you know we'll look at that one next week it's pretty deep in the money it expires next Friday so that's a good opportunity for me next week to share with you some of the monitor automations and management techniques I have in there for positions as they approach expiration don't have a lot of um, optimism for that one but that's okay we have that spy that we just got into earlier now we have a neutral XLE iron condor so Thanks for joining me today. I will see you soon. We'll dive into some management techniques for this bot that I have in my settings. Hope you have a great day. Happy trading. See you soon.